This might be the funniest book that I've ever read. So as part of my 24 books for 2024 challenge, I read A Confederacy of Dunces. And I've got to say, why didn't I read this sooner? It is incredible, genius, brilliant, five stars. I mean, you already knew that. I just clearly needed to catch up. Like, why wasn't this, why wasn't this taught in schools? It's so good. It honestly, it reads as like, a streetcar named Desire on steroids. It's like, oh, you want all of the crazy characters of New Orleans in like the 20th century with like a larger than life uh, anti-hero at the center of it all who ends up, you know, everyone, polite Southern society doesn't like their sort of alternative ways and they want to send them off to an institution. And I loved it. And while A Streetcar Named Desire is good, but in a sad way, like it's quite a um, unfortunate book, you know, what becomes of Blanche Dubois. This, you know, it's it's more ambiguous in how it ends. And I was like, oh, Ignatius J. Riley, what a fabulous character. Like what a um, incredibly deep character study, which when you find out about John Kennedy Tool's personal life, very, uh, you know, it's it's like a template, it's very deep. But yes, we've got to start with the humour. It's, I want more books like this. Why aren't there more books that are doing what this is doing? It's so farcical, vulgar, exaggerated. There's insult comedy, but it's also like a tragic comedy where you're laughing because it's so upsetting. I want more books like this. Why, what happened to them? Because this was written several decades ago and I can't really think of anything in the last 20 years that bears a resemblance to it, to be honest with you. And that sucks because I loved this. The second I went to have a look at what other people thought about this book, I thought, oh no. I was getting like um, Catcher in the Rye flashbacks. The number of people on Goodreads that were like, this is terrible. I couldn't stand Ignatius. What a horrible character. And it's like, are you six years old? Like, oh, you didn't understand the book. You didn't understand the book you didn't understand a book. Like how insular does your thinking have to be? How close-minded that you can't even begin to entertain the possibility of an unlikable main character? Like what? Like literally Holden Caulfield flashbacks. It was like, oh, that's the beauty of it. Like it's a character who you're not really supposed to enjoy, but you, you're you interested. You're like, how did this happen? Like, where did this person come from? And as the story unravels, you begin, you begin to appreciate, or at least I did, like, oh, he's the victim. His mum is fully the one who's in the wrong. Irene, oh, the mother-son relationship in this book is so complex. And male book talkers, if you were a mother's boy, you've got to read this because I was very much a mother's boy, you know, spoiled brat, grew up to be a bit, you know, couldn't really do... Uh, couldn't live independently because my mum had, you know, been very much a helicopter parent. And this book is so in the pocket of that phenomenon. Like there's some weird, almost Freudian stuff going on where Ignatius, he's like in his 30s, but he's like lazy, gluttonous. The insults, oh my God, the insults. Like he's calling people mongoloids. If he doesn't like something, he's like, it's an abortion. Like, it's so dramatic. And I was obsessed. What I will say as well is if we're comparing this to Catcher in the Rye, one issue that I've always had with that book, I mean, granted, I love Catcher in the Rye, but it's very um, tunnel visioned. It's like the world according to Caulfield. This felt a lot more holistic the narrative alternates between all of these different characters and I enjoyed all of them and that never happens. Usually in an alternating narrative, there's at least one character where you're like, oh, this bitch, like, oh, I have to come back to this one. No, I enjoyed them all. There's like the um, Mr. Levi and his wife who hates him. Like, it's so funny. Like every character has some sort of comedic angle. Like she's constantly trying to bring him down. And then there's like the policeman that keeps, um, his like boss is belittling him uh, cause he's not brought anyone in for rest. So he keeps dressing him up in these like bombastic costumes. Like there's so many, it's almost like a sketch show in the best way. Like it never gets repetitive because it's constantly 
building on the previous time that we saw them to the point where it's so much. I can absolutely see how this won the Pulitzer Prize novel though, because when you put it in the perspective of America, it is very political. Like it's a blink and you'll miss it because obviously Ignatius is this like huge imposing figure that takes up so much of the story. But in the backdrop, you very much see 1960 society, how much black people struggled to earn a decent living. Meanwhile, Ignatius, who has all these terrible qualities, because he has like a good education and he's white, he could pretty much work anywhere. And so that disconnect is very, um, you know, it's, it's very severe and impactful and I liked it a lot. Of course, we have to talk about John Kennedy Tool's personal life. Um, he also had quite an intense relationship with his mother, which definitely comes across. But then also the fact that he tried to get this book to be published, the publishers didn't want to know. He then uh, unalives himself uh, via asphyxiation with like a car exhaust. And then his mum, years later, trying to, uh, you know, as, as sweet as uh, mums are, or at least should be, she tries to get his work out there and is successful. A publishing house reads this, loves it and puts it out there and then it wins the Pulitzer. And that's, that story alone is so touching. But the fact that the book itself is actually this like amazing, tragic, comedic, epic, like almost like a sitcom about the twisted relationship between a mother and a son and how that goes on to affect both of their lives. Like Irene is, by the end of the novel, she's an alcoholic. She's going out with um, a man instead of looking after her son. Like she is quite bad. And people can say like, oh yeah, but Ignatius is 30. He should show some responsibility. He can't. Like for whatever reason, I felt it was completely sociocultural. His mum, he never needed to adopt any kind of responsibility. And he almost felt like he had a divine right where he didn't need it because of his mother. Um, and it was kind of crazy to me that so many people don't appreciate that about this book and jump right on the bandwagon of blaming Ignatius. It's like, mm, no. I'm just thinking about all the times that he references Boethius because that philosopher had a very similar trajectory to him where he's this like intellectual surrounded by working class southerners that don't appreciate or understand him and so he gets incredibly belligerent and it's just insulting them left right and center and then he gets thrown out of his job and he has to work a as a hot dog vendor and he's wearing like a pirate's costume with like hat cutlass earring and then because of his earring like queer people in New Orleans think that like he's one of them and invite him to his party. Like it's so funny. He has like an ongoing correspondence with one of his classmates from college, this like Russian girl who like hates capitalism and their letters to each other were so funny where like she's trying to diagnose him with, with like various neuroses and like he's telling her that she's an idiot. Like, ugh. There were moments reading this where I had to like read the same line over and over again because I would just be staring up at the ceiling like cackling and just like because it's so funny or at least I think it is. It's definitely it's a certain type of humour. There will there will be people who won't appreciate it and that's fine because you know it's it's very dry, it's very satirical, um, and it's also quite farcical. So it's not for everyone, but it was definitely for me. So if you couldn't tell, I love this. I thought I would like it. I didn't know that I would like it this much. Like it's one of those where I can see myself years down the line if I'm feeling a type of way where I'm like down in the dumps. I'll read this, maybe not even all of it, just a few chapters and my day will be better. And that, that is storytelling. That is the magic of storytelling. So thank you, uh, John Kennedy Tool, you ledge.